record. All right. Hello, and welcome to the For Her Empire podcast. I'm your host, Abby Moucha. And in this podcast, we address the personal and the business issues that female entrepreneurs face in their day-to-day lives. My guest today is the lovely Jamie Martin. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Abby. <laughs> Hi. So, uh, Jamie is a let me see, life and leadership coach. Mm-hmm. Did I get that right? Yep, you've got that right. Yeah, so Jamie's a life and leadership coach, and, and in today we're talking about her personal experience, um, especially on the topic of overcoming infertility. So, yeah. Hi, Jamie. Yeah, hi, Abby. Hi, hi, yeah, hi. I, you know, infertility was one of those things that I didn't, I didn't expect. I don't think anybody expects it. Yeah, nobody expects that. Um, right, right, right. I mean, I had an inkling. I always had a, a, a sense that something was going to be off for me. Um, and so even when I was in my twenties, I had this sense like, Ooh, I might have to adopt. Like it was just the way my body was going. I was like, ah, I might just have to adopt. But of course, as I got older, I was like, Oh, this, this might, this might be, I might be able to just do this thing. Right. Um, be able to have a baby, make it quick, easy, et cetera. <laughs> right. Like, like what everybody says, Oh, it just happens. <laughs> right. But it, it doesn't for everybody, and, and especially I would say women that are older. So I'm, you know, when I met my husband, I was already in my early 30s. Um, and, you know, we always hear the, the clock really? running out. I hate that because, you know, really it, good. It, it puts more pressure um, oh. on, on all of us to, to try to make something happen. And when my husband and I finally decided to, to try to have a baby, because we were like, right after our wedding, we both changed jobs. We were, we were in kind of a state of chaos and we're like, let's hold off. <laughs> Wait until you know, we settled in a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and when we started trying, it was, we were like, oh, this should be, this should be easy. Yeah, in theory, right. sounds easy. <laughs> easy, easy. You just uh, once a couple times a month, you know, you time it. Yeah, That's like get like a calendar, like I'm ovulating. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we had, I had the app, so I was check, checking it and making sure yeah. we, we, we timed it right. Um, but then five months went by. And, and the older you are, they shorten the time before you should go see a, a fertility specialist. So I think it's, I, don't quote me on this, but it's somewhere in the mid thirties um, where they're like, once you're after this certain age, you need to check at six months versus a year. Okay. And so at five months, I scheduled my appointment so that we could, um, we didn't have to be fertility doctors. You tend to end up they're really busy. So you might have a long wait. Yeah. Um, so we were able, yeah. So it's one of those where you're like, the minute you have an inkling, you might need that appointment. Do it. Schedule. (laughs) Schedule it. (laughs) Because sometimes they can be months off. Right. Um, and so we, we went to the fertility doctor and she did a ridiculous amount of a diagnostics. Oh my Um, God. um, That was terrifying. Yeah. Well, so luckily some of it is just blood work, Oh. which for me, I don't mind needles. That's totally cool. Um, but, uh, there, there's at least one, one exam that says they check your fallopian tubes. Okay. And let's just say, I won't get into more detail than that. But yeah, I don't want you to go into more details. <laughs> it is not comfortable. It is not comfortable. It I came home and I, comfortable yeah. either. No, no. I looked, I looked at the nurses. I said, please say I never have to do this again. And they're like, well, we can't guarantee that, but. Holy crap. Next time we'll give you drugs. And I was like, why didn't you do that? You need drugs now. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, you should have done that this time. Yeah. Um. So you, you kind of, you go through this whole diagnostic process. And then after that, like for me, they didn't find anything. Oh, I don't you know if that's good so or bad. <laughs> pardon? I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I know, right? I, on one hand, I kept struggling with this idea of like, if I knew there was something specifically wrong, we could fix it. Yes. You know, and on the other hand, I was like, but there's nothing wrong, so this should be easy. 
you know, so there was this duality that was going through my head and um, it was, it was crazy because, you know, at that point we, we started some treatments with some hormones and stuff. And um, the, I think it was like two months after we went through the diagnostic piece of it. Well, actually I should backtrack a little while we went through the diagnostics, we actually did get pregnant, but it lasted three days. Yeah. So it was one of those where you're like, yay. Oh, how does it last three days do? Um, cause it's, it's, it's about how the, hor- they, they're checking hormones. So they're looking for your HCG hormone. And if it is above a certain range, they're like, Oh, it's positive. But, um, that first few, I think it's like 12 weeks, the, the baby as it's growing can actually decide not to, to like, uh, I hate to use the word, but abort itself. Um, so it, and it can be a lot of different reasons. It could just be that it wasn't viable to begin with. So even if it had lasted, it would have had, you know, massive issues with organs or something like that. So, you know, miscarriage is actually really prevalent in women. We just don't talk about it that often. Um, and we don't know necessarily like infertility. The one thing that's interesting about it is that, you know, everything because you're constantly going back into the doctor. So I was going in um, every like three to four days. Oh, that's very frequent. Yeah. Yeah. And it depended. So eventually it got, it got spread apart depending on when you were in whatever part of the process. But so, you know, whereas most women wouldn't know, right? Like a lot of women abort that early because it just happens, but they never knew they were pregnant yet. Oh, okay. Right. So, but in, in infertility, you, 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 know. you have all those markers, you know? Yes. Um, and so it was, it was heartbreaking for us because we were both like, we had, we got so excited about it. Yeah. And that weekend we, I mean, we went and got books and like, we were trying to figure out how to navigate the, oh. we have all these events. So how do we actually navigate these events oh. so that no one knows? And, and then the next day, like, that next Monday, they were like, sorry, no more. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> we're just, oh, uh, but it, it, the harder part was is that I was hope like it was the that glimmer of hope that I wasn't going to have to do any of the infertility stuff. Yeah. Right? Like I just did the diagnostic and, and now I, I got pregnant. Awesome. I don't have to do the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Right. So that was, that was the biggest heartbreak for me was, was that piece. Um, and then I would say like, it, it got harder because as we started doing some, we did some just initial hormonal treatment. And as we went through that, um, there were a couple months where I was in full fledged denial that I was not pregnant. Like I've never experienced it before. You have all the scientific reasons for why you are not pregnant. I mean, they're pretty obvious when you're a female, (laughs) Um, but I was convinced and convinced. I was like, no, I'm pregnant. This is, this is just wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm pregnant. I know I am. Oh, oh God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. (laughs) It's not freaking. (laughs) Yeah, it is. And and, and it's interesting because I think a lot of women go through that, like, not necessarily the denial piece, but you go through the cycle so quickly, you know, you go through the hope and then the despair, the hope and despair. And like, it's, it's a quick cycle. A month is, you know, it feels like a long time when you're not trying, but it's a super short time when you are only from an emotional perspective because your roller coaster is going swinging so fast and you have to switch from despair of not being pregnant to hope that this next time is going to happen pretty quickly. Um, And so that was, that was really difficult. And, you know, at that point in time, I had already been working with my own life coach. And so I luckily had a support there to work through all of the emotions that was, were coming up for me and, and how to navigate that period of time. Um, And, and, you know, my husband has, was wonderful during it 
this whole experience, which, yeah. was, which was great. And our doctors were great too, because they didn't push. And I would say anybody who is going through infertility, look for someone who's really willing to work with you on what level of comfortability you are. Yeah. Because I wasn't ready for IVF yet. What's an I, IVF? It, in, oh, IVF is, I, you know, I don't know what it stands for. <laughs> okay, just describe it. But the process is where they, they load you up with hormones. Oh. They take your eggs. They take his sperm. They put the two together and then see whether or not you get an embryo. Oh. Outside the body? But outside of the body. Yeah. How does it get back inside? So, <laughs> right? <laughs> they put it back in. <laughs> but that's the easiest part of the whole process. But putting okay. it back in is the easy part. It's oh. the easy part. Like that's done in like a, a second. Oh, um, everything else was the hard the hard part. <laughs> the because you for the hormones you're you're putting you're using shots. Oh, yeah. yeah, this so is something much more horrifying by the second, <laughs> right? So you get used to it. It's interesting because you do get used to it. I mean, I, I remember the first time staring at the shot going. I look at my husband and going, it's going inside me. I can't, I can't do this. You know, he, he was shaking. There was no way I was having him do it at that point. <laughs> he was just like, I'm here for support, moral support at this point. <laughs> and he's like, just do it, just do it. And, and I, I, you know, that, that first one was, it was painful. And it was one of those moments of like, <gasps> okay. But once you started doing it, you're like, oh, this is easy. You just kind of keep going. Um, and eventually he had to learn. There are certain shots that I can't reach the spot that needed to, to be reached. Um, and so he had to learn. And, you know, it <laughs> was interesting. He was just like, how do I do this? I'm like, <laughs> All right, step by step. And I can't this is like literally he... the most unsexy thing. <laughs> oh, totally. There is nothing sexy about this process at all. Nothing sexy about it. It is so unsexy. <laughs> It really is. It really is. But, you know, what I found is that our intimacy grew. Yeah. I think like emotional wise, you tend to connect after all of this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it doesn't happen with everybody because sometimes it, it pulls people apart. But oh. we were really intentional about like after a certain period of time, I woke up to the fact that I was so needy of him and I never asked him how he was doing. So it took probably six months before I got there. And then I was like, I finally woke up and I was like, I haven't asked you, how are you doing with this? Yeah. Thing? You've been my rock through it. What's going on with you and how do we support you? And, and once, once we got to that place, I felt like we were able to actually grow our intimacy better and support each other through it, you know? And so when we went through IVF, yeah, it it was more of us holding each other's hands and also being able to have the, the hard conversation of being like, I'm scared. Yeah. You know? And he's like, I'm scared too, because what if something happens to you? You know, yeah. um, he saw how some of the hormones treated me before IVF and I went into straight depression with some of them. I mean, like literally within 24 hours, and it's a crash. Great, just a crash, you know? And I called the doctor. I was like, all right, I know what this is. I've, I've seen this before. Like, I can't, I can't do this. Um, and, you know, he, especially when you start to think about things that are a little bit iffy on the like suicide side of the conversation, right? You're like, mm, there, there's, there's no way we're going that way. Yeah. Um, and so he saw me go through that. And, and so he, he was able to actually talk through a lot more of the okay, I'm scared too. I'm scared of how yeah. this is going to, what's, what's it going to do to you? Um, but as, so we, we were through treatments for about two years and we oh did God. one IVF. Yeah. Two years. Two I was years. praying to be like only like a few months, but two years. Oh yeah, no, two years, two years. And, and we were lucky because there's what? women and there's couples that go for like seven, eight years. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Um, or who had to start and then put a pause on it because they moved to uh, a state where in, in, or infertility treatments aren't covered by insurances. So like there's certain states that actually mandate that they're covered on some level. 
and there's other states that there's none none of that so they couldn't afford it because yeah out of pocket it's not it's not easy um we lucked out on that front too our insurance really covered most of it which yeah. was oh, such a blessing yeah at least um, you don't have to worry so much about the financial part of it yeah you already have yeah, so much to worry about i know right right I know that's why that's why like um, I really have started trying to become more of an advocate for that. There's an organization called Resolve. I think it's dot org that is all about how do you support um, people who want to have a family. So they don't just say infertility, yeah, because it could be you know it could be uh, a lesbian couple or you know a gay couple that are just looking to have that family yeah. that they obviously physically can't create it themselves. So they're really inclusive on that side. Um, That's nice. In terms of, yeah, it's really cool about how do we get government to really say a family, regardless of how it's created. Yeah, the government's kind of shit sometimes. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> totally. Um, but one of the biggest things that I found is that after that first round of IVF, I was I just kept controlling, right? So. I kept being like, I'm going to make this thing happen. And we, you know, I was, I was following everything. I was checking every number. I was, you know, like. Obsessively just, controlling everything. Yeah. And holding on to this idea that this, this was going to happen. Um, and I, I, at that point in time, I, I was actually in my coach training program and surrounded by a wonderful group of coaches who all supported me throughout this journey and helped me get to the place of being like, just let it go. Let go of the outcome. Don't, yeah, just let it go. Let it you, know, go. you can do the actions, but just let the outcome be what it is. Yeah, you can't um, control of and, it anyway. Right, you can't, for as much as we want to. <laughs> I mean, oh my goodness, the, the amount of times I wanna just be like, if I can just make that thing happen, it'd be great. Life would be wonderful. Um, but they helped me really open up to the idea that it was okay to let go of the outcome and see what else could be there for me. Um, and so during our second round of IVF, I really practiced that. And um, could I ask a question? Just let my, yeah. How, how long is, is a round of an IVF? Like one month, one year, a few months? It's um, about, so the, the drugs are about two weeks long, two, two, two weeks, but you, you do birth control before that for about a month or 10 days, 10 days to a month. Um, and part of that is to just relax your body, right? Because they, they want your body already kind of calmed down. Mm -hmm. And then you go into about two weeks of shots. Like it really daily shots daily multiple times a day oh, oh jesus yeah. your body went through a lot <laughs> oh yeah lots of bruises <laughs> but i made it fun i i made sure because you don't really need band-aids but i was like if i'm going through this i'm having fun band-aids so i bought mickey mouse band-aids oh. i bought like every cartoon under the sun because i was like yeah simplicity in there yeah make it a little fun yeah. you know even if it's not you know, it's not that exciting, but like, you're like, all right, I've got a Mickey Mouse Band-Aid on. Sweet. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's two weeks and then it depends on what you're doing, right? So there's, you can do a fresh transfer or a frozen transfer. So what that is, is the difference is that a fresh transfer, then right after they take your eggs out, they put you on some more medicine and wait until the embryos have gotten to a certain age and it's usually three to five days um and then they know okay this these are mature and they'll put it back in you and then you're taking shots for another i think it's like another well if it's successful it's probably another two months if i remember correctly um if it's not successful then it's only like two weeks um, you try again and then you try again um and hopefully hopefully they got enough embryos that you don't have to do the ivf part again 
um, because you can freeze those. So you can freeze the extras, oh. um, which is nice. So like if some people get a ton the first round and then they freeze them and then all they're doing is that second half of the, yes. the process. Um, if you only get one or two, <laughs> How big is it? That first I'm very ignorant right now. How big is it? It's like an egg or something. It's really small. It's I have to get another one or two. It's so tiny. Yeah, yeah, they're they're super tiny, and I, you know, the way your body works is that um, you've got ovaries on both sides, and obviously, I'm not a doctor. I just yeah, know this through. Yeah. Going through it all, right? But you've ovaries on both sides, and and what you're, they're trying to do is stimulate the eggs, the ovaries to produce more eggs. Oh yeah. And so each month your body's actually calculated how many eggs it's supposed to grow. And so during a normal cycle, it calculates the, it already knows it's, it's got a supply for this month to be 10. And then after a certain period of time, it's like, Oh, I've got one or two eggs that seem to actually be doing really well. I'm going to, I'm going to let release the other ones. So the other ones get reabsorbed um, and then Weird. they're basically dead. Right. Um, yeah. It's, it's fascinating. Uh, and so that's how it normally happens. What they're trying to do with IVF is make it so that all of the eggs continue to grow. So then they go in and they just basically suck them out <laughs> with a, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, luckily they give you medicine for that piece. <laughs> oh. 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 Luckily, wow. there's medicine <laughs> oh my for, for that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's, it, it can be a long process. You know, it can be two to three months, depending on what happens throughout your cycle mm. um, with it and how many eggs you get and whether or not you end up doing a fresh transfer. Yeah. Like the first time around, we, d- we had to do frozen. Um, because of the way my body was acting, my doctor didn't like the idea of putting me through more drugs because yes. my body was already hyper stimulated. Um, so she's like, we're not putting anything in you. We're freezing them all. Okay, <laughs> fine. Um, and so the, yeah, so it, it, it's, it's really, it's really easy to get sucked into the details of IVF too. Um, I know a lot of women who you know, they call you with all your hormone levels and whatnot. And some women get so sucked into that, that it, it actually gets even more overwhelming for them. Yeah. And lucky for me, I'm, I'm usually that person. Okay. There. I'm usually that person who's like, usually I got in the keyword. Yeah, yeah, usually. I made a choice early on in this process. I was like, I'm not doing that. Because I already knew how emotional it could be. And I knew that if I sat there and like analyzed every little data point they gave me, I was going to go insane, <laughs> just oh. insane. So I let that go. Yeah. Um, At least maturity and that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it was actually easier than I thought it was going to be really? to let go of that piece which I was surprised by. And maybe it's because I had so many other things. I know, right? I was like, why is this so easy for me to not like write this down? I, I've written down everything yeah. detailed about, you know, my anything health related. Um, to the point my doctors are like, what are you doing? Take <laughs> like, a step yeah, back. Just breathe. Just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Just breathe. It's okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it helped because it really, especially when we got to the point where we got to the second round of IVF, I was able to just go with it and be like, okay, I'm just following what the doctor said. You know, I'm just, I'm following what they said. I'm not going to overanalyze it. Yeah. Um, and I, I let myself breathe a lot more through it. You know, I gave myself so much more TLC to just letting go of all the drama that was going on around me, yeah. you know, and just, and quite frankly, not listening to other people, you know. Oh, it's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I think oh, sometimes people advice. try to be helpful, but they're not. <laughs> they're not. They're not at all helpful. Um, I think one of the worst things that people kept telling us, just relax. And I'm like, 
You Excuse me. I, Who has an offer here? Me or you? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm like, you do realize I go to the doctor every like every other day or every two days or whatever. And, yeah. and it's, it's really hard not to know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so relaxing is not necessarily the easiest no. thing to do at that point. Um, but I really, I, I, I learned a lot of lessons through it. I, I learned... I think the biggest lesson I learned is find your support group. Okay. The people who really are going to hold space for you um, and know not to give advice. <laughs> right? Like, I don't have like, advice. Don't Just know. listen to me. Don't say anything. Right? Yeah, don't say anything. <laughs> Except for maybe like, it's going to be okay. Or like, give me a hug or, you know, something like that. Yeah. Um, but once, yeah, once I found that, I, it really helped a lot. Um, and then also I learned not to compare myself to other people's experiences because yeah, you hear, you hear different fertility story from every couple. Everybody goes through something similar in terms of the medical side of things. Um, like the shots, that, that kind of process piece, but emotionally what exactly is causing their infertility how they decide to approach it is all different. And early on, I talked to a couple of people and I was like, well, am I doing this wrong? Should I, you know, should I be doing yoga every day? And should I, should I be eating this way or that way? Or should I take time off? And, but the more I talked to other women about their infertility, I, that's when I started realizing, wait a second. She does that it's completely different, you know, and their journey isn't any better or worse than my journey. Yes. And how I need to do it is how I need to do it. Um, and it was that, that was a turning point for me yeah. for sure was being able to say, Oh, okay. I don't need to go vegan. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I can that's, imagine that's you probably got told that like, you know, it's yeah. something closer to the, to the natural source and organic and plant. Like it'll simulate yeah. the body. You're like, I right. <laughs> Yeah. Or not drinking. <laughs> I mean, at that point I was like, I could not drink for a couple of months, but two years. And then if you get pregnant, I add on a few more. I was like, oh. I, I need a glass of wine every once in a while, <laughs> especially during this process. Yeah, I mean, all that, that glass stress, of wine. all that tension. You have to yeah. let it out or you're just going like, to implode or something. Or yeah. you lash out yeah. at somebody. It, exactly, exactly. Um, it was great because one of my nurses was like, after certain, certain um, parts in the process, she's like, okay, now your prescription for tonight is go home and have a glass of wine. Oh my like, god! I love you. <laughs> oh my right? god! Jesus. Like, I love you right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for that permission. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's 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 definitely an interesting journey to go through. Um, and like I said, a lot of lessons. It, my support group was is huge. It still is huge. Um, you know, and and I don't. I, I can't remember if I mentioned this already, but we did successfully have a baby or not have a baby, get pregnant because we're pregnant now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, baby's growing and it was with the second round of IVF, which was great. Yeah. Um, and I would say the, the biggest thing, it was, it was so fascinating because I still remember the, she showed me the embryo before she put it in. Um, and like I said earlier, right putting the embryo in is super easy. Um, but they, they like put it on a TV screen. Oh, so they blew up like, this image. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's your, and I knew, I knew right then. I was like, this, that's this my baby. Doing... That's my baby. Yeah. yeah. It's like that we're, we're going to be pregnant with that little one. Cause that little uh... one wants, wants to be here. Um, and we got confirmation right after Christmas. So ah! yeah. It was like, six months. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we were like, oh, great Christmas present. Yeah. <laughs> I actually put it on my Christmas list for people. I was like, really? I just want to be pregnant. So yeah. <laughs> if you could just 
do whatever you want. Like, is it if you are a praying person, pray. If you yeah. are uh, sending positive vibes, send positive vibes. Just that's the Christmas present. That I baby want. has so, to happen. Yes, yes, and it did, and it did, and we were over the moon. But it was funny because, like, uh, because we'd lost the the first baby. Yeah, so yeah it's weird. Anyone. Yeah, we were like, we're not telling a soul until we've gotten because they keep checking, right? They keep checking to make sure that. Um, the baby stuck and we we're like we're gonna wait and so we had to do the lie like the the little dance of oh well because of the medicine I'm on I can't drink and they're like well when do you get to find out because everybody knew what we was we, what we were doing right yeah. they knew all the steps they knew when it happened I um, was like oh no they gave me another shot that just like confuses the numbers <laughs> you know Lying through my teeth, of yeah, course. Yeah, it's not like they're going to call you out on that anyway. Like, I know, if you do, it's right? offensive. <laughs> exactly, exactly, right? Exactly, it was awesome. Um, but my husband would be like, we would just, we would sneak glances at each other. I know, glance. the little excitement in there. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So it's it's been it's been a cool journey. Um, I mean, in retrospect, it was a, it was it was a journey that I wouldn't give back. For even though it was so painful and so hard, I actually learned one of my passions. And my passions is advocating for people who want to have a family, you know, and just for whatever reason, can't do it, you know, yeah. and making sure that they get the support they need, you know, and, and that's not, it's not as easy as it sounds. Yeah, um, it's not. No. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, and and sometimes doctors do, you know, they they I, I know a woman who um, had similar insurance to me, and they miscoded all of her tests, and so she had to she could she had to stop because it cost too much money. Um, and I I told her I was like, you should double check that, you know, because it you just one little change could have saved them thousands of dollars, right? Yeah. Um, and so it's really important. I, I found that it's really important to find a really good doctor, um, and and their support and how they process things. And are they willing to let you say, "I'm not ready for that"? Oh. And I think that's that's the biggest thing that our doctor allowed was was like, "I'm I'm not ready for that." Oh. Okay, this is the these are the other options. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Wait. So, like, if, if there's a part of the, of the, let me call it a treatment, that you're not completely comfortable with, they can pause on that and find alternatives for you? Yeah. So, like, oh. uh, typically there's there's a couple of different things they can do ahead of time. So, you can take hormones um, to do some, like, they call it more natural than artificial because okay. you're stimulating – you're using normal hormones to stimulate your own hormones, right? Okay. Um, and so you can do that, and they can follow you and help you time when to have uh, relations, as they call it. <laughs> Which I always laugh at. Always laugh at. I'm like, really? Get laid. You mean, you mean yeah? You, you mean have sex with my husband? <laughs> yeah, like forget right. about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But they they help like get rid of that guesswork. Um, which was great for us because, um, not that it worked, but it, the, once I started looking at my app and comparing it to what they were charting, the app I was using was completely wrong. Oh. And, and that's only because my cycle is so all over the place. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. So, so for the first six months, we, we could have just missed it by a day. Or yeah. Two days, or, you know, three days. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. So they have, they have ways to kind of do it. They have different techniques to do and drugs they can use before you jump into um, IVF. And so like, if you're not ready to get into shots and stuff, they'll do other stuff. And, and some doctors have kind of the, like certain rules. Once you've done certain things, they're going to bump you up. Um, and it's just, it's so important to have the conversation of like, okay, well, why are we going to this next level? Are there other alternatives? And what I loved about my doctors, she always had another, other options. There were yeah. always at least two options on the plate for us to pick yes. from. Yes. Um, which, 
was tremendous because she, and she educated us. You know, she went through end to end what was going on, what we would do, how, you know, what the pros and cons were, you know, because certain, certain things you might end up with, you might be more prone to having twins, mm. right? Or there might be other side effects to it. Um, and so she did a great job educating us so that we could make an educated decision um, that felt good for us instead of feeling like, oh, well, this is just what the doctor said. Yeah. You know? uh, especially when you, you're picking the treatments. Now, once you get into it, you kind of just go with what the doctor's telling yeah. you. Because that's, she's the expert. Yeah, you are not. <laughs> she's the expert. Exactly. She's the expert. You can ask questions all you want and be like, well, what is it supposed to do this? And is it supposed to do that? And um, whatnot, just so you know, and you get comfortable with it. But, you know, she, she did a great job of just guiding us through the whole process and, mm -hmm. um, and her nurses too. I mean, they, they were tremendous and all of most, I think all of them had in some form or fashion done infertility treatments themselves. Oh, which was great because then they knew. They knew how you're feeling. At least they could, at least they could relate yeah. to a degree. Exactly. Exactly. And they could like, they, they, she had a great balance of like the practical nurse who just made sure you knew all the things logistically you needed to know. She had the nurse who like, are you okay? Let's sit down and talk for an extra 10 minutes because I'm worried about your mental health, you know? Yeah. And then she had the nurse who was more that like, motherly type in the sense of like not not to your emotions but more like I'm gonna comfort you through this process so as we're doing this treatment like it's gonna feel a little bit more zen like you know yeah. so she had a nice balance of all of it that that you know you were able to go huh okay and yeah, there were days where I was, begging, I was oh a great team great team <laughs> and it it really and that's when I, you know, I talk about the support side of things and the support is so critical. Um, and I think it's critical for everything we do in our life. And it just, infertility for me highlighted it so much to look at what kind of support do I want? Who do I want it from? And who, who can give me that type of support, right? Mm -hmm. um, some, some people just couldn't give me the support that I needed. And, and that's okay. It's but that's not for you. That, they're just not for me, right? They yeah. didn't have to be part of that journey for me. Um, and so I really found the people who wanted to be part of it and were willing to kind of go with me on the journey and not and not put their opinions into it. Yeah. Which was great. Oh my God, it's so happy for you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Oh yes. my God, oh my God, oh my God. Whoa. And, and luckily, luckily, uh, the universe has given me an easy pregnancy so far. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'm going to take it. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. I'm going to take it. Oh my God, I have yeah. so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got, we've got time. <laughs> okay. Uh, question one. So during this, pro oh, well, can I, let me charge this. It's, it's showing a red light. Uh, let me just charge it oh. real quick so our internet doesn't go off. Why aren't you charging? Oi, oi, oi. Why aren't you charging? I hate when that happens. Yeah, please charge. Why aren't you charging? They put the wrong charger. Is it this one? Let me check on my phone if it's charging. It's plugged in correctly, but it's still red. It is not blinking. Huh. Yeah. Let's see. 17%. Well, it's not charging either. I'm confused because <laughs> it's plugged in properly. 
But it's not Is charging. It ah, I just maybe? bought it. It's still, it's oh. still new. You can only still steal the pack at the, at the, at the back oh, of it. Yeah. 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 I bought it like less than a week ago. Because <laughs> I was told it's fast. And yeah. it charges very fast, apparently. Well, they lied to me. <laughs> it just doesn't charge at all. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been working. I guess this is the first time it has ever gotten as low as 15. Oh, what, you? It was 17, then 16, now 15. How, how fast are you going mm. down? Hey! Okay. Uh, I don't think they can do at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just try and see if we can finish 15 minutes before it goes down. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll... we'll... Perfect. <laughs> you so um, <laughs> were you working throughout this period, or or you just decided to like take a break from work and everything? I worked through uh, all of it really until the the second round of IVF, um, and and that was I, I would say that was a hard part too because I actually was um, an executive at the company, and all of our executive meetings were the day I found out I was not pregnant. And so, yeah, it was, Whoa. and of course those meetings are never, they're never just hunky dory, right? Like there's always something intense you're talking about. And I'm sitting there like looking over at one of my colleagues being like, and she's just like, oh, cause I, I, that's the other thing I did is I made sure there was at least one person at work who knew what I was going through, um, and who I could have real frank and honest conversations about yeah. with it. And so she knew she would just look at me and she'd be like, go to the bathroom, <laughs> like, just go to the bathroom, let yourself do what you emotionally do what you need to do. Um, but like that, that was really hard. Um, I actually, so I went full-time coach the month before my second round of IVF. Oh. Um, and so I did take a little bit of a break for that in okay. order to just be like, you know, this has been a crazy year yeah. and a half with Oof. work and the work stress and then the infertility stress. I was like, I'm going to give myself that month. Um, and, and that helped, that definitely helped me recover emotionally and mentally. Um, I know there's a lot of women who don't get that luxury and it was definitely a luxury for, for us, for me mm, to be able to have. Yeah. Um, and so, it's, it's one of those where I, I always look at anybody else who's going through it and, and have making sure that you're, you're frank with your boss about what's going on and, and seeing how you can actually, you know, build some flexibility into your life if you can yeah, yeah. with work. Um, because it really, it really takes a toll on you. Was it your boss understanding? Your my your, my your... boss was. Oh. I mean, he, yeah, he was understanding overall. Um, he he didn't want to touch it with a ten foot pole. Like he didn't want to. Yeah, have it. One, of my mean, fa- one of my I, I favorite. One of my favorite moments. Details of it, but I just want to know you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think one of my favorite stories through this whole process is that I found out I wasn't pregnant, and he and I were supposed to have a meeting. And he walked into my room, and I'm bawling in my office, and I'm oh. bawling, just bawling. Right? He walked in. He just stopped. <laughs> Stopped at the threshold and he was just like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. As he's walking out, as if I was a snake that came like a, a, a cobra snake that came up and was ready to bite. And I was just, but oh. it was, it was hilarious. And it, it helped me kind of break out of my mode of like tears. And after that, I was just like, that was, that was the funniest moment ever. Um, the irony is he's got two daughters and I'm like, huh. Okay, you better get used, about to, that. used to these moments because they're going to happen at some point. But, yeah. um, but he was, yeah, he was super understanding. And, oh. and so were the people in the know, um, oh. you know, they, they understood when I needed to leave for a phone call or any of that stuff. Uh, my great. second question, and I don't want, I don't know if you're going to sound offensive or not, was, um, at least based on how, um, movies portray like pregnancy and anything that involves hormones what are your moods like were you like happy one minute and then sad another then hungry then angry and like crying and like how how was your mood so overall i would say i i, I didn't have those kind of swings oh okay. um 
but I also before I, I, I realized midway through the IVF journey that I needed to go back on my antidepressant um, because I was dipping. I dipped too much. So I didn't have like a high, but I, I would come down. I would have no energy. I would be really sad. I'd be really down. Um, and so after I worked with a counselor and after a fer- period of time, we both got to the recognition that it was like, I, I need to get back on a, on medicine. Yeah. Um, and that really helped me navigate the emotional aspect of it. Um, but really the hormonal swings haven't been, weren't that bad for me, which was surprising. Cause I, I, like you said, movies yeah. depict it this way yeah. and all over the place. And, and that hasn't been that bad. I mean, I, I have those moments, right. Where my husband will look at me. He's like, you're, you're, we're watching Fuller house, Fuller house. Now, mind you which is lighthearted and whatnot. And I'm crying. Yeah. You know, and he's like, he's like, what's going on there? I'm like, it's, it's hormones. Okay? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's purely hormones, you know, oh. but it, it was those kind of moments where it was like, it wasn't towards anyone. It wasn't like, it wasn't out of like that. Like I'm a crazy woman type of a thing. It was just more like these subtle moments that yeah. like, you're like, Oh, that's not normally me. Okay. But Whoa. once I recognized it was hormonal, I could go, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to ride this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? it, and then I would let the person help. know. Huh? I, I would let the person know. Like my husband, there was one moment where he, he started, he, he came into the living room and he started complaining about stuff. And I looked at him, I was like, you don't want to walk into this room. Oh. <laughs> you just don't want to. Because just it like doesn't your boss. matter. Yeah, like, like you're going to get 90% of stuff at you that has nothing to do with you. Yeah. And, and just turn around, and walk away. away, just walk away, give me 10 minutes, I'll be fine, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But like, it, so there were certainly, there were a few moments of that, but it wasn't like, I, I wasn't aware of it. No. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, it's saying nine yeah. percent right now. Let me try so oh, no. I can make it work. Because I, 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 I still need. Oh my god! Is it a charger? Let me see, put it in a different phone and see if it works. Well, the charger is fine. Ah, oh, I started to blink red. Oh my god! Oh my god! Is that for your headset or for the computer? Huh? It's it's going down so fast. Like now did it's you get a... it? Huh? Oh. No, I was just reacting to you you. Yeah. I don't want it to, I don't want it to shut down. I still have so many questions to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also worried that if it goes down because it's recording to my computer. Okay, uh can I try putting it off? And so the, the meeting meeting might might go off since there's no internet. Then I put it back okay. on. Okay. Okay. Just... Okay. <laughs> Did you get working? Uh, it's not check right now. Okay. Uh, I'm just, let me see. It's working. Let's log into the. It's blinking green. I think that's a good sign. Yeah. That's good. Awesome. So, like, don't touch it. Leave it the way yeah. it is. <laughs> don't move. Don't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's chatty. <laughs> okay. Well, I can ask my question without being so worried that like, I have to wrap it up. Okay. So, um, how, how, how do I phrase this? Um, you, you said during this period you're working with um a, 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 your life coach and as well. 
So mm -hmm. apart from the support you got from like your team at the clinic with the nurses, you know, the modeling nurse, the one is like, are you okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you have any like um, other supports apart from your life coach uh, of people who have, who have also um, gone through the same process and, and, and we're now pregnant so they can like encourage you, so to speak? Yeah. You know, I didn't, I, I talked to a couple of women throughout it um, about their experience and they, they were more than happy to have more conversations, but I eventually found that um, the, the support I was getting through my coaching team, as well as some of my other friends ended up being enough. Okay. Um, and even though they didn't understand the experience, it was almost better on some level because they, there was no comparison. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's, that, that's. So once, yeah. So once they understood how to support me by not giving advice, really, um, it, it became a lot easier because it was like, okay, I, I know you just need to cry or I know you just need a hug or I know you just need space or a, Hey, how are you doing? Yeah. Um, you know, and so once I, I, I understood what I needed, that's how I was able to figure out what support group I needed. Yeah. Uh, and from your husband's end, because he supported you through all of this. Uh, like, yeah, like, oh my God. Oh my God, seriously. It, he was amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. He does sound amazing. Yes. <laughs> he, like, you um, know, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, I think, you know, if, if you were going to ask about his support, yeah. um, that was the thing I worried the most about is that he, he didn't really build a support network um, like I did. And so I kept kind of encouraging him, <laughs> kind of you more like pushing, <laughs> <laughs> like you, you really should talk to someone. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, I wonder. I, um, for, for uh, maybe it's just my, my thinking. I think it, yeah. it will be um, not 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 just more or less easier, but more um, socially or, or um, acceptable or normalized for you to seek out the support than for him to seek out the support. Since technically he's not the one pregnant, <laughs> he's not the one yeah. taking the hormones. Yeah. Yeah. No. Totally. It, I I agree with that. I think it is a lot easier for women to seek out support. And I think it's also easier for women to be able to say, um, I'm going through this. Whereas men, it's like, I'm, how do I adjust to my wife is going through this and I'm going through it with her, with her. But like, you know, like there's a, I think, especially in society, we have a weird dynamic of like, if you're not the one who's actually going through it, we forget about you. Yeah, it's not to be going right. through it, it's and, her going through it, and you are there for the right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly. Um, mm. And so I, I made sure that I, I checked in with him consistently, you know, and was in, so while he was my rock, I tried to also be his rock. Yeah. And be, be able to be vulnerable together, be able to say we're scared or we're worried or we're nervous, you know? Yeah. Um, and so... I, I tried to really almost flip the switch on who was supporting who yeah. because I had the support so that I needed already. And so I, you know, um, tried to give that tip back to him and then also encouraged him, you know, to be able to say, Hey, you know, you, you can reach out to people. You can, you yeah. can talk to some, some of your friends, like if you want to. And, um, and if you needed to go talk to someone, like go, go talk to a counselor or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, so Makes sense. <laughs> because if he's, he's your rock and if you don't have support, then how are you going to support me? Because now we are both crumbling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so, it, you know, now it was what I was worried about was that I was going to, I was going to take so much from him that he was going to crack. And so it was really important for me to make sure that I checked in with him um, and that he knew like he could, he could do whatever he needed to do to get the support he needed. Yeah. Um, 
but he, you know, he, he, fig if he figured it out. He did it his own way, like they all do, <laughs> right? Uh, um, yeah, and was able to to navigate it and and open up to me about moments when he was he was afraid, you know. Yeah. And he um, still does today. He's like, I'm worried about you. <laughs> that is not encouraging, but okay. <laughs> right, right. Like you're you're not you're not working out enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank so you very much. Like your, health, your health and the baby's health, you know? Yeah. I'm like, it's your okay. concern is noted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like that your concern is noted. <laughs> and I'm going to continue doing what yeah, I'm doing. Yeah, like, <laughs> I've set it down, now you can back away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Like, so in this whole journey, apart from, you know, when... I can just hate saying this phrase. You lost the baby for three days. What uh, What would you say? Oh, he's still charging. Thank God. <laughs> I'm so worried it's going to go down. <laughs> he's still charging. Good. So, like, what's, like, um, the the lowest point, I guess, so to speak? I would say the lowest point I got to was when I was in denial of, of being pregnant or not being pregnant. Because um, I... I, it was probably about two or three weeks worth of being convinced I was pregnant oh, when God. all the facts said I wasn't, you know, I, I mean, every fact under the sun was like, oh, you are not pregnant. Um, that was my lowest point because for me, I, I've, I've had depression before. So I've noted, I knew what that felt yeah. like. But I had never gone through denial in that way before where it was like I, I every fiber of my body was like, you are pregnant right now. Um, and it was just a bizarre experience for me. And I, I had to, I, like I worked with my, my coach and I worked with my doctors on figuring out how do I release this denial because facts aren't doing it. Um, and so for me, that I think that that was the lowest point because that was the scariest point for me. Yeah, You know, it was new. So it wasn't something I knew how to navigate. I know how to navigate when I'm sad. I know how to navigate when I'm you know down and depressed. Like I know how to navigate when I'm happy and excited and all that stuff or stressed. Yeah. Right. But the denial piece, I was like, what is this? It's well, like you just completely understand. reject anything that's contrary to what you believe in. Like even when the yeah. facts are in front of you, just completely reject it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And it was like, how do you how do you navigate that? Especially when I'm such a factual person in general. Um so I'm I've got a very analytical brain. And so the the idea that I was rejecting the facts, which I always lean so heavily on in my life, was yeah. like out of it was out of left field um, wow. it's yeah like this and part is like respect the facts this side is like that's all lies <laughs> yeah exactly exactly and in fact i feel like the, this part was even saying no i don't believe those facts those facts are, are lies let's dig a little further maybe yeah. if we we take one more pregnancy test yeah it'll, it'll, oh my God. tell us the truth <laughs> yeah, the human brain. The <laughs> yeah i know it's amazing isn't it yeah um, and that was, that was shortly after we got pregnant um, the first time. So I think it was a little bit of the grief process yeah. of, of losing that, and that first baby and then like kind of not fully grieving it and then it coming back up in the den 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 yeah. denial later like, on. So this of grief just remains in this part like, no, I am right. Yeah. Everything else is wrong. Yeah. Exactly. Ah. Yeah. Oh, it's frustrating. Oh, it is frustrating. It was. But luckily I got I got through it. Um I was able to I think it was only like about three weeks. Or it's a very so. long time. Like twenty one god days. Very long time. <laughs> 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 yeah. Long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was, you know, and it was one of those where like because you're in this process, you move quickly through the next step. And so I had to allow my denial to occur while still looking at what we were going to try to do for the next month. Um, and I think that help of the action actually allowed me to move past the denial a little bit more. Whereas if we were just going to twiddle our thumbs and wait more that I would have sat with the denial a little longer. Yeah. Whoa. 
Holy crap. Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> it's two years. <laughs> Woo! Oh two my years. god. It's a very long time. Wow. So um yeah, it's totally a very ignorant question right now, but like so what exactly was the cause of the fertility? We have no idea. Hell. <laughs> we don't know. Um and, and that happens to a lot of women. I, I don't remember, there's a stat out there and I, I'm not going to quote it because I don't remember it well enough, um, but it's a large portion of couples that end up with um, undiagnosed or um, unexplained infertility. Um, doctors just haven't figured it out. They, they don't know what, what causes it. They don't know why it happens. Um, all the tests on both sides come up clean. And so they, they just don't know. Um, there's, I mean, there's obviously theories out there of, yeah. you know, I mean, is it because you're older? Is it because you um, are because of the processed food we're eating, but they don't know yet. Yeah. Except in theory, it's, 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 it sounds like you're able to get pregnant easily in theory, like boom. My period is this, 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 this to get pregnant, uh, for sake of, uh, what's the word? Uh, not clarity. It's like just to, just, just to be on the safe side. Um, we're going to start having sex the day before my ovulation <laughs> and the day after. Right. <laughs> <It's gonna miss laughs> yep, yep. Oh yeah. Uh, and it's funny cause like you read all these articles of like, when should you have sex? Should you have it? you know, right before ovulation, at ovulation, after ovulation, how many times a day, how frequently. And like, th that's the one nice thing about going, like talking to a doctor is that they, they help kind of clear out that fog of saying, yeah, okay, like, yeah, because they literally, they, when we were doing, working with them on timed um, intercourse, they, they would say, okay, we want you to do it uh, at this, at, on this date. It's so unsexy. This day, you're like, get it done. <laughs> yeah, it. Get it done. Yeah. But they, they were like, now, you know, do do what you would normally do. Have a nice romantic dinner. Have a couple glasses of wine. Like, try to make it a thing. You know, after a while, you're like, all right, just, we're just going to, we're, I don't care what we have to do. We're just going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Plus we, you, <laughs> you both know, know that the, as in the, here's the part. I, I think, um, I don't know what was comedian mentioning at some point. Let me Trevor Noah or someone that when, when you, when you're trying to um, have a baby, no matter how romantic you make that night, you still feel that undercurrent of that tension that all of this is going to come towards this. And no matter yeah. how you like um, paint it, it's gonna get down into. Are you in? Stay this way for the next five minutes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it totally is. It's like, yeah. Did that happen? All right, all right. You're sweet. Now I'm gonna sit like this for ten minutes. <laughs> Even I though they, 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 I, I feel like I've read that that doesn't actually help anything. But you're like, you know what? It wouldn't hurt. It's just in case. Just yeah. in case, I'm still gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh my god oh my god yeah you yeah, it's, it's, you went through a lot <laughs> <laughs> oh my god wow so so now now that as you've been through this and now that that you, you're, you're pregnant um what's your advice like for other women or okay, let's, let's, let's start with women who are infertile and then advice for families trying to have a child so what's your advice for them so I would say for, this is going to be kind of funny, is that for women who are, um, there are couples that are, are infertile, um, is ignore most people's advice because. <laughs> that's very contrary to I your know, own advice I, now. I, I, totally, right? Yeah. Um, I know that's why I was like, it's a little weird, but it's because most people haven't gone through what you're going through. And so their advice is coming from a good place. Really? But likely likely it's not what you need in that moment. Um, and, and it, it could be anything from, you know, like my mom kept saying, Oh, it'll be fine. Just relax. Just relax more, relax more. And I was just like, mom, something's going on. Like, I, I don't know what it is. Like <laughs> what I needed in that moment was for her to actually talk, like 
allow me to have the conversation yeah. um, versus giving me advice. Right. And so that's kind of more what I mean is like, understand what you need. And so when advice comes to you that you don't, you don't need in that moment, yeah, let just, it go. Just let it bounce it. off of you. Yeah. Just discard it because it's not, it's not what you need. Um, and your journey is really going to be your journey, regardless of what anybody else's journey is, you know, yeah. um, because it, everybody's different and every couple is different. And, you know, we, I, somebody else can have a similar story to mine, but their bumps and hurdles and what they needed to do in order to get over the hump, it's going to be very different than what mine was. So yeah. for, for me, I, I definitely recommend like, let the advice bounce off of you. That especially if you don't, if it's not what you need in that moment and ask, you know, ask people for what you do need. Okay. Um, so like, if you need a hug, like, go ask hug for a me. hug, you know, hug me. <laughs> um, or simply say, I just need to talk about it. You know, cause a lot of people would ask, um, they would ask me, they'd be like, do you want me to ask you how you're doing and how it's going? Or do you want me, do you want to co come to me with it? And for me, I wanted them to ask. Oh, okay. Because that meant they were in my corner. Um, and it also took the pressure off of me of feeling like I'm only talking about this. Yes. Right. Um, now for somebody else, they might want be like, nope, because every time you ask me, it, it brings it up again. So, you know, really understand what support you need, um, and be willing to ask for it so that people, hopefully the advice starts to dissipate. Yeah. Yeah. And you get the true support you need. Yeah. Um, and are there any misconceptions, like now that you've gone through this whole journey for two years, are there any misconceptions that you've had, to, like, you had initially that you've had to let go of, of ones that, that, that people around you um, assume? Yeah, um, well, I would say the biggest misconception I had was uh, similar to what you said about the hormones uh, with IVF was that I thought I was going to be on a hormonal roller coaster. Um, and that scared, scared the living daylights out of me. Um, and so I, everybody's body is different. So there's going to be some women who do have that hormonal yeah. roller coaster. Um, but for me, it, it wasn't that way. Um, and I think that's important to know is that your body's going to react to it differently than what somebody else is. Yeah. Um, and so it might actually be a little easier for you. It might be harder for you. Um, but that was a misconception that it was a hundred percent, no matter what yeah, you were going to get, crazy. you were going to be crazy. <laughs> you know, Like that. I was convinced of it. Yeah. Um, so that was the, the movies big, just paint that picture. <laughs> they do. They do. Right. Um, and then I would say the other misconception around it is that um, everybody thinks that um, all doctors are going to push you. And so, and they're going to push you to go faster than necessarily you want to, oh. and that they're going to try to get you straight to IVF as fast as possible. Okay. Um, and that's, that's not true. You know, and I had to, I had to work with a few people who um, know the medical community, but never had experienced infertility and, and really teach them being like, no, they're, they're totally waiting for me to make that leap to make yeah. that jump. Um, and they're guiding me through that. Now there are doctors that do push you through it. Um, I've heard of some women where it's like, boom, 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 boom. And they really do feel like it's a factory. Um, but that's why it's so important to find a doctor that you connect with and that you appreciate. So even if you choose somebody who is a little bit more factory, factory like where they they have a process and they just yeah. push you through it that might work for you you know um but it's not all doctors and i think that that's one big misconception that's out there is that yeah. all infertility doctors are like we're going to just do it this point be a child this factory. point b this point c yeah let's go <laughs> exactly exactly um and then i would say the last misconception i can think of is um, just that, that the idea of 
letting go of stress allows you to get pregnant. Um, because, and I worked a lot with my counselor around this, is that in, in every case, your body in some form or fashion has some semblance of stress. And even, and I, I use this example all the t- time because it really resonates with me, is that like, mm-hmm. we, have, we have babies born with alcoholism with that are crack babies right yes and those are stresses on a mother's body right like there's no way that taking cocaine doesn't create a stress on your body that drinking doesn't create a stress on your body and so we wouldn't have those babies if stress was a direct correlation yeah um and so being able to like let go of just relax with conception just relax you'll have the baby um and that just brought up another misconception too is that you know a lot of people think that through IVF you're automatically going to have twins or the next time you're going to just be able to have a child and and that's not always the case um I don't know if it'll be the case for us um it might be but there's so many different ways that infertility happens um, that you don't know until you're in it that that's going to happen to you. So there's women who have gotten pregnant the first time naturally, and then they have something called secondary infertility, and they can't have a second child. Um, and so that all plays out in there. In there, that you know, it's kind of like once you've you've had a baby, you think you can just have one again. Yeah, and that's not necessarily true. Um, so there's there's a lot, and I probably, as I keep talking, could probably <laughs> spill out a bunch more. But I think those are the top ones yeah, for yeah. me that were the the big misconceptions. Wow! Oh, learned a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I have learned a lot. I mean, I still personally don't want to, but I have learned a lot. <laughs> Good. <laughs> wow! Holy crap! Whoa! <laughs> Wow. Okay. Uh, let's let's now promote you a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So if you want to talk to to Jamie or or work with you as you know a leadership coach, a life coach, how can they get in contact with you? We're gonna do a second a second podcast, right? To talk about the business yeah, side. Definitely, definitely yeah. talk about the business side of things. Yeah. Um, they can get in contact with me at my website, so jamiemartincoaching.com. Um, that's probably the easiest way to get a hold of me. I'm also on Instagram. Ooh, Everything's Instagram. Jamie Martin Coaching um, and Facebook. So, J- yeah. JM Martin Coaching Instagram, right? J- it's Jamie Martin oh, Coaching. Oh. Jamie Martin. I found you. It's, I found you. Did you change your hair color? Yeah, that's it. Yep. <laughs> found you. Woohoo. Woo. Um, yeah, and I really, I work with primarily women, but I do work with men. Um, and it's not just on the infertility side of things. So I work with anybody who, who women who have really been going and going and going and, and, lost themselves in the process of, yeah. of the, the going. Um, so the going could be work related. It could be infertility related. It could be personal life related. Um, and we work together to, to shake it all up and yeah. allow you to finally put yourself first. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to add before we wrap up? No, I think that's it. This was great. Thank you for your time. Ooh. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs>